Okay, hello students. Welcome back to Flip Classroom. We're still studying World War I. At this point in our notes, we're looking at question number 13, the two new technologies of the war. So by this point, it's 1914, the war has begun. Um, and both sides are mobilizing in Europe. The Schieflin plan, as we remember from the previous class, was a failure. The Schieflin plan only triggered Great Britain to enter the war. And now both sides dig in. Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire are now forced to fight a two-front war between France, Great Britain on one front, and Russia on the other front. Both sides dig it an elaborate trench system that really goes just back and forth only a couple miles. Uh, the battle lines... Um, only exchange hands just a couple times, and both sides really dig in for this long and very bloody conflict. So a couple of the new inventions that make their debut in World War I are as follows. Uh, the first is the airplane. Okay, we've got the Red Baron uh, flying above. Uh, airplanes were used to scout out any pos enemy positions. They were also used for the first dogfights in uh, early combat. They would fly low off the ground, a couple hundred feet. Um, they would fire at the soldiers in the trenches. Um, they would also dogfight with the other uh, enemy planes. The next invention, the tank and U-boats. The tanks were very important. Um, were a very important invention because they cut through the thickets of barbed wire. We said the barbed wire became a big invention during the Boer War in the age of imperialism. So those tanks, early armored vehicles, really could uh, uh, cut through the barbed wire very easily. Then also the Germans developed U-boats or undersea boats, and these were uh, preludes to the submarine, uh, which would later be developed. These boats could attack and fire torpedoes at other cruise liners and ships. Uh, here's another image of a tank going through a trench. You guys can see the tread that the tanks operate on. Okay, steam warships were a huge invention. Guys, gone are the days of you know wooden frigates. These are heavy steel metal battleships uh, with long-range artillery. That's good for blockading your opponent or going to war on the high seas. The Zeppelin. Uh, the Zeppelin wasn't widely used. This was uh, They made easy targets, but uh, the Zeppelin was good for uh, going up in the sky and scouting out some reconnaissance and seeing where your enemy was positioned. Uh, the Germans used this quite effectively. Another invention, flamethrowers and grenade launchers. Again, men were in these elaborate trenches that were a couple feet deep. Well, in order to get your enemy out of the trench, you would uh, fire a flame of gasoline. Uh, the tanks you guys can see here uh, would f shoot out the gasoline, then there would be an, an, an ignition source that would spark the flame, and it would set the trenches on fire and force the men out of the trenches. Also, grenade launchers would do the same. And finally, one of the most uh, deadly inventions of World War I is poison gas, whether it was mustard gas or chlorine. Um, the gas is both of those, chlorine and mustard, are heavy in the atmosphere. So when these pellets would land within the trenches, the gas would stay low to the ground. As a result, in order to escape the gas or escape your skin being burnt, you had to get out of the trenches. So when you would get out of the trenches, you would be shot at. But where you have gas, you have, well, gas masks. That's another invention of World War I. You also have the rapid fire machine guns. Uh, they first made their appearance in the Spanish-American War, the Gatling gun, but those advancements are improved upon in World War One. And here you've got uh, British soldiers wearing their gas masks in a gas attack. You also have the German soldiers wearing their gas masks uh, firing the machine gun there. Long-range artillery or, or heavy artillery uh, was one of the new technologies of the day. Uh, soldiers could fire heavy ordinances from miles away and have those shells land within uh, the trenches and blow apart the trench system there. And this is a photograph of a World War I battlefield. Soldiers going to battle. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a map of the trench system. So what the trench system was, and you guys can summarize this for question 14, 
the trench system was an elaborate design of of lines of battle. And the trenches usually were dug four and a half to five feet deep, deep enough for a man to stand comfortably and not get shot at. They would reinforce them with sandbags. Um, and the men, the soldiers, would be uh, standing along the front lines of the trench. Behind them, you would have a fire bay, you would have a support trench, you would have uh, their housing or cots, you'd have a first aid, you'd have a communication trench. Um, so the men would be in the forward line, and in front of that, they would have the barbed wire. And then in between the other side's trench is this idea of the no man's land. And this is where most of the killing took place as the Allies and, and uh, the Triple Entente advanced. Uh, creating all sorts of casualties there. Here's a photograph of young men uh, going into battle, leaving the trench system. Here is another photograph showing just what life was like for soldiers in the trenches. Another photograph depicting the trench system and British soldiers making an advance. Okay. Now, the war is not made possible without the financial institutions. This is question 15 in our packet. How does the war affect the economy? All right. Well, European countries suffer economically on both sides. That's important to remember. The government is forced to raise taxes, and as a result, a lot of the European countries will borrow huge amounts of money to finance the war effort. The governments also regulate prices to prevent strikes from happening. Okay, that was a big uh, violation of natural rights. You can't really do that anymore. And the big thing also is women went to work. While the men fought the battles, the women were working in the factories, cranking out heavy artillery, cranking out machine guns, cranking out uh, other ordinances, tanks, barbed wire, things that would be very useful in the battlefield. All right. So you by now you should have up to question 15 uh, answered. Question 16 is actually a duplicate, um, so you don't need to pay attention to that. Uh, if you have any questions, you can post again on Edmodo.